Hey guys, what's up? Hi, Zach Detron here from One Half Gazette, here with the next Patreon video, or should I say the first Patreon video. Uh, this is the first one in this series that I'll be doing on a monthly basis. Basically, this is the Patreon base building video. As you guys may or may not know, my Patreon perks are all centered around base building for the most part. At certain tiers, you get a custom war base each month. Um, but this video is focused on the first two Patreon tiers that actually deal with the video um, as part of the perk. And um, for the first two tiers of Patreon, where uh, it's a platform where you donate to the channel, the first two donation tiers, you get to ask a question in my Patreon base building video, which is this video. Um, and then the next tier, you get to have your base reviewed in the video as well. So. Um, some stuff to help you guys with base building as a uh, thank you to my patrons. And let's get right into it though. Not all my patrons filled it out. Some just donated out of the, um, just out of generosity, didn't want any perks in return. So um, some did not hit me up for this, but um, a few did. And we're gonna go ahead and highlight their questions and their bases in this one. So if you guys want more information on how to donate, just uh, check the description, it has the link to my Patreon page if you wanna have the uh, the perks that these people have. Okay, that's enough ado, let's get into it. Uh, first question here, we're gonna start with the questions first, is from Jacob Darkzuck. Um, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Hi, Bisectatron, I have a question. I had a break from Clash for a year and I'm back now. Before I liked war and now I try to get back to warring again. My question is which attack strategies should I first learn as I'm a Town Hall 9 with 1515 heroes? Um, very popular question. I get asked this all the time about the best strategies for low-level heroes. First, let me say welcome back to Clash. If you were gone for a while, I hope you're enjoying the new balance, all that stuff. Uh, Town Hall 9, a pretty fun Town Hall level, still pretty balanced. Now, the only thing that's different, assuming you have max troops, which are not that hard to do. So if you don't have max troops, especially the important stuff like hogs, loons, um, healers, get all that stuff maxed out. It won't take that long. Um, assuming you have max troops, the only thing that's separating you between a max Town Hall 9 offensively are those heroes. So don't invest as much in what troops or support for the, he uh, the heroes. And what I mean by that is queen walks. Once you get to level 15 uh, queen, that's like the first time you might be able to do a queen walk. But just consider, four healers is the same, what is that? 54 troop space, I think, 56 troop space for four healers to do a queen walk. That's the same if you have a level 15 queen, same true space if you have a level 30 queen. So don't invest as much in queen walks because the the value you can get using that 56 troop space for like um, 11 hogs is the same as someone who has max offense and max heroes, um, but the value you get for doing a four healer queen walk is so much less than someone who has max uh, offense in terms of heroes. So you want to play your strong cards. You don't want to play your weak cards. So if you're going to do a, a kill squad, don't bring three golems and just your heroes. Golems are what buy time for the damage behind them. And if you're just bringing your heroes, you're investing in what's your weakest. You want to invest in what's your strongest, which is why I recommend you maybe do small kill squad attacks um, and you go heavy on hogs, on loons and hounds, on the stuff that you do have maxed out. So focus on uh, not queen walk hog attacks, but maybe some suicide hero hog attacks, some suicide hero la loon attacks. Just bite off a small piece of the base. Um, maybe it's maxed out, maybe it's not. But regardless, bite out a small piece of the base with your heroes, then just go heavy with what you do have maxed out. Now, alternatively, there's another thing you can do, which um, I've talked about before in videos, and that is bringing a big kill squad, but bringing damage besides your heroes, bringing uh, Valks, Wizards, Bowlers, Pekkas, Witches, just damage behind your Golems or whatever's tanking that's not just your heroes. That way, you still get some good value for the kill squad. You're not relying on those low-level heroes to, to get the value for you, because they just won't. They're so much weaker than level 30 heroes. So those are my two uh, points of advice. Specific strategies, um, they vary so much. You can do so many different strategies, um, but stay away from strategies that are investing too much in your heroes in terms of kill squad attacks that only feature the heroes or are almost primarily the heroes in terms of the damage behind the golems, or attacks like queen walks, um, 
trying to send in the king behind a golem for the, to take out the queen. Stuff that's focusing in investing specifically in your heroes is not going to be a good play. Play your strongest hand, which is your troops. If you have those maxed out, focus on those. Yeah, you can still bring a big kill squad. It's a common misconception that you can't bring a big kill squad if you don't have maxed heroes. You can still do that. Just bring wizards, bring uh, something, Valks, whatever, for more damage to help supplement your heroes. Either way, you're going to be a little bit of a disadvantage, but you can really make up for that by, uh, by following that advice. So thanks for the question, and thanks for being a patron. Next one here is from Travis Campbell. In a Town Hall 10, do you want your expos in a section of wall by themselves, like an expo island, or with another defense? Also, do you want to test the farm at Town Hall 10? Test the farm... Typically not, assuming you're going to get scouted. If you typically get scouted by a Town Hall 9, the element of surprise won't do much for your test the farm, so it's typically going to make it easier for them to attack your base if they know where the test the farm is. They can hit it hard with a kill squad or a queen walk. Um, if, you, if you don't get scouted, if you typically are not getting scouted, they're just hitting you fresh with a Town Hall 10 or Town Hall 11, then you can think about it, test it out, it might be worth it, but definitely not if you're being scouted. I think it might have merits if you're being hit fresh, especially by a Town Hall 11, you can throw them off with a Tesla farm. Um, let's see, the other question here, the first one you were asking, uh, do you want your expos in a section of walls by themselves, Expo Island? No, that's typically going to take up too much real estate on your base, and the Inferno Towers are what you want to have in an island, if anything. The Expos are good high HP buildings. They're good for defending La Loon, for defending Queen Walks. They're very valuable defenses, but that doesn't mean you have to put them by themselves. At Town Hall 9, um, we see that. But once you transition to Town Hall 10, the Expos are no longer your biggest defense. The Inferno Towers are. So if you have an Expo Island, you're going to make it so your base is in an awkward design where the important defenses like the Infernos are probably going to be crunched against other defenses and storages, which makes it too easy to take them out with a bowl or kill squad or something like that. So uh, focus on protecting the Infernos much more than the Expos. The Expos, I like to put um, guarding Queen Walks, you know, far enough in the base they can't be taken out by the Queen from outside the base, but far enough out that they can cover the Queen Walks. Also, um, just put them in kind of three different important locations to, to be a high HP defense that's hard for looms to take out, it's hard for hogs to take out, and throw some giant bombs next to them, sure you can do that, but no need for an expo island. They can be alongside storages and other defenses just fine. So thanks for the question, Travis Campbell, and uh, thank you as well for being a patron. Now let's move on. We have one person who um, at the next tier submitted a base for the base review uh, section of this video. Okay, so we had one base sent in again from Travis Campbell um, at this next donation tier. And this is his base, a little bit grainy. That's just the resolution when it got sent to me. It must have got a little bit compressed. Uh, so not the best quality, but you guys can still see the base just fine. Traps are shown and everything. Um, I think it's a very good base. Let me start by saying that. Very good design. I'll point out some of the, the strengths of it. Um, because they're important to acknowledge and there's a lot of them. One thing I want to point out is if you look up here, um, he appears to be the top base. So when you are that number one guy, uh, when it comes down to if you want to win wars, you got to consider the town hall. If people are struggling to three star you, if you go against a really bad clan, I've been in, in cases where I've altered my anti three star base so it's still anti three star but the town hall just happens to also be towards the interior somewhere to make it so um if they're struggling to to hit my base they might only one star it so that's something to keep in mind he has the giant bombs out by the tesla or the giant bombs out by the town hall i assume that's because people often try to drop wizards or something to take it out I don't know what type of competition he's going up against, but we'll judge this base on as if it was a CWL type base in a very competitive matchup that has Town Hall 10s, Town Hall 11s, where it has to defend against the three-star attacks. Um, so let, we'll, we'll talk about it in terms of that. Um, and if that's the case, these giant bombs, of course, would have to be on the inside of the base, or at least by defenses in some uh, sense. So that's one adjustment. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the red air bombs by the by the the air defense there. Typically, the lava hound will just soak that up. Maybe his testing has been different, but 
Um, from what I've seen, you want to put those over here by the wizard towers where lava hounds have trouble going, uh, and it's going to uh, add to the damage to the slash damage on the loons. Uh, but the, the seeking air mines, of course, uh, in very good locations by those outer air defenses that are most likely to get the hounds on them in a La Loon attack. So uh, let's back up, talk about some of the strengths of this base. By the way, I love the single Inferno. It just throws people off. They don't know what to do. I often run it in my bases. I, I use different designs, um, weird designs I, I make, but the single Inferno can throw people off for sure. Although you gotta be careful because it can be exploited uh, because it's only that one stream. The heal spell works much better over it. So you gotta keep that in mind. But um, this base, air defenses offset in this direction, and then has his archer towers, wizard towers, and expos over here. One thing I will caution him about is the expos don't have to be that far away from the air defenses. I like to have at least one expo on uh, each side of the base, generally speaking. So I might put an expo over here instead of the cannon. If you have a side of the base that only has cannons and maybe a few archer towers, you risk a good queen charge in that side of the base. Now, that being said, this base is pretty well defended against queen charge from this side. You have the air defenses, the air sweepers, which push back healers. So the healers are gonna be at risk, especially with some seeking air mines in that area. And also, um, it's difficult because these cannons are set back, so you have to bust the queen in in order for her to target them. So pretty good against Queen Walk, but make sure the Expos all are not on one side typically. It makes it a little bit easier to do a Queen Walk when that's the case, because the Expo is your best, besides the Inferno Tower, your best defense against Queen Walk, as is a Lava Hound CC, of course. A Lava Hound CC works well, and that's what I would recommend uh, if he runs this base design. Now, one thing I thought right away when I saw this is the uh, cloned bone dragon attack, where you take out an air defense here, air defense here, both with heroes or uh, hasted loons or something like that, and then you come up the throat of the base with dragons, with sometimes a clone spell, with maybe one hound, a bunch of loons, a rage, haste, uh, all types of spells. But I like the air sweepers pointed this direction because it's much more difficult to come from here with that attack because the outer air defenses are so much farther back. The funneling doesn't work well with the heroes because the heroes typically funnel and take out air defenses and it's harder to do that on the opposite side of the base from where you're coming in with your dragon. So I like that about this base. Um, also, of course, you gotta point out the expos good distance from the walls can't be uh, t taken out by a queen walk. I'm constantly thinking about queen walks because they can be so devastating for a base, um, even at Town Hall 10. So Expos set far enough away, the queen has to come in to take them out. And then, um, yeah, of course the giant bombs, if they were, they were moved inside, uh, would add to the strength of this base. Just thinking about that for a second. Uh, the spring traps, I'm not so sure about this spring. I'm not sure if it's for miners or what exactly, just for some kind of core, uh, Witch Bowler or something like that, but typically you want to have those between defenses just for defending hogs if you can. I'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, all four wizard towers out of range of uh, air defenses, very good, good against La Loon. He has the geared up cannon. People often ask about that, really it doesn't make that much of a difference, it's one defense. I typically don't do it, but um, I, the only time I, I find it effective is at Town Hall 9 when you can um, take out an entire bowler with it in the middle of the base. If you want to throw that in the middle of your base, it can take out a bowler very quickly, a geared up cannon at Town Hall 9. So maybe for that, but otherwise I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, not that it makes a huge difference. Either way, uh, the queen by the bomb tower, in case the skelly spell is used on her, the bomb tower defends very well in a Laloon skelly situation. Uh, spring traps, great placement. I love how they're between defenses to kill hogs. Um, besides that one right there, these are all on, on point, and I think this one is for miners. I'm thinking about miners on this base. Uh, someone would probably try to do a queen walk, maybe, on one side, the king on the other. Although it's a wide base, it's difficult for miners to sweep through. I think it has a good setup. The core's not too packed with defenses, so the miners are gonna be taking out mostly storages, air defenses, stuff that's not that effective in the core of the base. Then they'll get to the back side and have some trouble with all these defenses. So I think it's pretty good against miners. Um, the one thing, the way I would attack it, if I knew where the traps are especially, and the way I think it's the weakest, is against hogs. Um, if you look at the core of the base, 
no serious defenses that can hurt hogs, um, no giant bombs. That is a huge indicator for someone to use hogs against the base when you have a core that doesn't have any active defenses to hurt hogs or any traps like that. Um, the way I would attack it, looking at it with all the traps here, which oftentimes attackers can't do, um, to be fair, but if I did, I would probably, um, assuming it's a Lava Hound CC, I would suicide the queen here, try to take out these three defenses, maybe the king as well, um, a few funneling troops, and then basically I would be kind of negating some of these traps right here. It has a spring, a giant bomb, a skelly. Those would be much uh, less important. Also funnel my kill squad, I'd probably jump right here, come in with a, a rage, bowlers, come through, get both heroes, get this entire section of the base taken out, start the hogs here, um, maybe freeze the inferno, probably, well, maybe, maybe not though. Might just, because it's so directly pathing into the inferno, which you have to be careful about, I might just save, you know, use three heals, heal here, the giant bomb would do damage, but not a whole lot. Um, there's not many other defenses besides the Teslas and the cannon that can hurt the hogs, and it's so initial. They're right there on top of the Inferno. If you go strong with hogs and probably heal over there, uh, reinforce here, maybe another heal. Um, depends where you need it. It might be needed over these cannons. Then just the final heal back here, or if you could save that second heal, uh, use it later, like around this bomb tower in the final heal over the back end Inferno. That might be how you have to do it. Um, but that's how I would attack the base. There is some springs in this area. There's a spring right here. Um, there's a spring by the Inferno, which might come into play. But these two would be negated. This giant bomb would be negated. Now, to be fair, he has only three giant bombs inside the base, it looks like. So you got to keep in mind, if this was really defending hardcore anti-three-star base, the giant bombs would be more inside the base, which would make it more difficult. If they're by the, these Infernos, which there are gaps for them, uh, they'd make it much more difficult to use hogs, but that's how I would do it. So I would caution um, Travis on this base to have a very defense dead core. It makes the hog pathing uh, a little bit easier and it makes it easier to heal them and to use hogs in the base, especially with a single inferno on the back end. Hogs can do much better against it. But that being said, um, it takes a very high caliber skilled attacker to do that. So I think this base can defend against three stars on about 99% of attackers, to be honest, at Town Hall 10. It's just very rare we see someone that can take out a good base like this. So it is a good base, I really like it. Um, also the mortars, those are to mess up balloon and defense targeting pathing more than to actually be a defense, they mess up pathing. So um, if the mortars weren't there, you could basically spam and target each of these defenses with loons, which can be very dangerous if there's so many individual defenses that can be targeted with balloons. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Unfortunately, because they have to be on these two sides, they can't cover loon deployment on some of these defenses, which makes it easier to, uh, to target these um, anti laloon defenses much more directly, but it is a trade-off and it's still a very good base against laloon. I think it's difficult to take out because you have these cord air defenses and it's hard to come at them with the sweepers guarding them. So that makes it a little bit tricky and I think it's a, a good overall base. Um, good job to Travis. Just a few adjustments, like I said there, can make this base a little bit better. Uh, but thank you once again for being a patron. Guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, once again, check the description of the video. If you wanna be a patron, you can sign up and get some of these benefits. Um, there are some other perks that are not gonna be in videos, such as, <clears throat> excuse me, the custom war base and the custom clan war mini tip, which um, the mini tip you might see if uh, one of the patrons at that level elects to do that. Um, but there will be an expert interview uh, with a patron possibly, or at least with his questions. Um, that's another perk is you get to be in one of my expert interview videos. So a lot of cool stuff is my point. Check out the Patreon uh, page if you haven't already. And uh, that will do it for this video. Thank you to all my patrons in the month of August. And also there's gonna be a Patreon war coming up to celebrate all the new patrons. So uh, stay tuned for that as well. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you guys later. Bisectatron out.